Hello again, Awesomers. It's me, it's your old buddy Steve Simonson, coming to you again with another Awesomers.com podcast episode. This is episode number 162, and for the uninitiated, that means you just go to Awesomers.com slash 162 to see today's show notes details and maybe even a link or two about what our subject matter is this very day. Now today I'm talking about kind of Amazon seller news, which is kind of never ending. And I don't do a, a ton of this coverage because, uh, you know, a lot of times it's just uh, daily blocking and tackling. But I think this week in particular is very intriguing because we're marching towards Black Friday of 2019 and the FTC has opened up hearings into Amazon's uh, alleged or uh, suspected antitrust behaviors. So it's been a, a big week in the news. And I want to just share a few of the highlights. This is not going to be a a tremendously long episode, but if you're not already aware, first of all, Amazon uh, is under investigation for antitrust and anti-competitive behaviors, and a couple departments in the U.S. federal government have negotiated who's got the uh, monkey, who's got the authority, and the FTC, I believe, has won that uh, initial battle for who's taken the, the lead on this investigation. So what does that mean? That means there have been uh, actual hearings that have taken place in front of the House, uh, the United States uh, House of Representatives. And we know some of the folks that are taking the, the stand and testifying about their experiences. And of course, Amazon has the right to, to testify or otherwise uh, enter their own evidence and declare their, their side of the story, as, as it were. And obviously, Amazon, in many ways, has their own opinions about these topics. And I think that's, that's an important point to, to lead off with. Although, you know, I can be very uh, judgmental, <laughs> if that's uh, not putting it too lightly, uh, about things that I dislike. I can also be very vociferous in my defense of Amazon. And so I'm, I really try to be objective. And I tell sellers all the time, and I would tell this to Amazon, that, you know, I'm, I 49% hate Amazon. I 49% love Amazon. And that 2% just kind of jumps back and forth like it's some sort of uh, border that, uh, you know, one day I'm in the love land and the other day I'm in the hate land. Uh, so it, it just depends on what's happening. And I, I'll be honest with you, for the Amazon seller community, it would be better if we loved Amazon at a higher percentage and that it wasn't so fickle, that it wasn't on the cusp of love-hate constantly. But the reality is, for most sellers, or many sellers indeed, that Amazon's policies, their changes, their, uh, their almost crazy, unpredictable ways that they change policies and adjust things have literally put people I know out of business. People who had uh, businesses doing hundreds of thousands of dollars a year or millions of dollars a year in revenues and, and had significant profits and therefore a lifestyle that they've created and a business, one with employees and one with uh, other downstream beneficiaries, uh, often the kind of just random changes uh, at Amazon vis-a-vis -vis policy changes have decimated those businesses, have changed those businesses. Now, I wanna say proactively for my Amazon listeners, uh, those within the Amazon uh, <laughs> Borg, as it were, uh, some of these people should have gone out of business because they were cheating the system. And so there's a, a very real and fine line between kind of black hat cheaters and people maybe who are living uh, maybe even on the gray zone, right? They don't necessarily know that this type of activity is uh, frowned upon or against terms of service. And then there's the people on the white hat side who are losing ground because they refuse to get into the black hat tactics. And, and some of those black hat tactics are extraordinarily uh, damaging and aggressive to to consumers first and foremost, but also to legitimate sellers as well. So there's there's this kind of range, and so I, I applaud Amazon when they do things that are are proactive at beating down the criminals. Uh, I I warn Amazon that like, hey, be careful of getting dolphins in the net because sometimes your you know just random changes in policy can can catch some of the dolphins in with the the smelly bad fish that you're catching. And, and we're the dolphins, right? The, the white hat players, the, the sellers who are in it for the long haul, those who are trying to be 
good business people and take care of consumers uh, and give delightful brand experiences. We're the dolphins and often we're caught up in the, those enforcement nets. And listen, I get it. Nobody can be perfect. Nobody can be precise. But there is a sense that there's no empathy and there's no correction for these, these times where the dolphins are caught up in the nets. It's just like, eh, it's just a few more dolphins. There's plenty more to replace them. And, and I personally, I reject that as a, as a good enough uh, reason to, to uh, ignore the, the damage that's being caused. So let's talk about the FTC very quickly. I'm going to look at my notes here. Uh, so the first thing is Amazon has admitted that it's using aggregated marketplace seller data to come up with its own products. Now, this is a very interesting uh, line of questioning. So, and, and by the way, a, a quite a, um, an admission from Amazon. We've always suspected this. They've never explicitly admitted to it, but they now have admitted that yes, they use aggregated data from sellers to build their own products. And the question is, is this anti-competitive? Is this unfair competition? Or is this just what everybody does? And that's, you know, ultimately up for the lawyers at Amazon to argue. And, and then sellers have their own opinion as well. And here's kind of where I come down on this. If you are at Walmart and you sell stuff to Walmart, Walmart will use their data to find ways of bringing out generic Walmart products. So if I sell some hot new seller, um, you know, let's just say it's a, uh, I hate to use everybody's same example. So let's say it's a cookie jar. I got the hottest selling cookie jar. And then Walmart says, you know what? Uh, he's got a cookie jar. It's got a monkey and an elephant on it. It's hilarious. Uh, we're going to make one with uh, two monkeys and a giraffe, and we're going to make our own version. You know, is that unfair competition? Well, just because I sell those to Walmart, just because Walmart sees them, doesn't inherently make that unfair competition. Because they can see what I'm selling through their channels, and they can decide, gosh, we should make our own version of that and knock them off. Now, should I keep selling to Walmart if they're going to knock me off? That's a, that's a question for another day. Uh, this happens at every level, not just Amazon, not just Walmart, but at every major retailer on the planet, they decide what they're gonna put their own brands in based on some of these objective metrics, what's selling in the marketplace. By the way, for Amazon sellers out there, that's kind of how we develop products too. So let's not uh, go throwing stones uh, at Amazon when we do the same stuff. But here's where I think Amazon takes it a little too far. They demand more things from sellers, right? They demand MSDS, they demand to know who your supplier is. They can see and track all of the individual details and data points. And even though they, they imply that because it's aggregated data, there's nothing really uh, being tracked on a, on a granular level. But the fact is it's all being tracked and then aggregated. So they can look and go, you know what? There's 50 sellers using this same manufacturer. And I'm not saying they do this, but I, I am saying I suspect that they do this. You know, this supplier must be a good supplier and this product category is hot. This particular product is hot. We should try it. Uh, and oftentimes, by the way, Amazon, I don't think gives enough credit to uh, intellectual property or, uh, or other things. They have many examples where they've knocked off somebody's, um, you know, chair, you know, patio chair or shoe or whatever else. And they, they do so with impunity in many times. Now, if it's not illegal and they just want to be kind of jerky business people, uh, more power to them. And remember that Amazon's a giant machine. Just because this is happening in Amazon retail or Amazon brand development doesn't mean the people at Seller Central and Seller Experience and even Seller Performance, that doesn't mean that they're somehow nefariously plotting against uh, Amazon sellers. It's just a giant machine. The, the root question comes down to, is that fair? Should they have access to unprecedented levels of data that they compel sellers to provide and then use that against them uh, um, on the competition, you know, on the, the selling battlefield, if you will? Further, I think part of the question is how many times do they just go to the manufacturers of those directly and try to cut out the middleman? Uh, and so you have to think about that. Is it fair? Is it right? Does it break any of the tort laws? Does it break unfair competition? Does it break antitrust types of things? And I think there's plenty of people who think it does. Amazon thinks it doesn't. 
And I, I think that's a, a conversation for, you know, the hearings and the lawyers and everybody to kind of settle out. But I can tell you it's the perception alone is enough for Amazon to take action and try to make things better than they are today. So another uh, big point of view is that Amazon, even as they're being hauled in front of the House of Representatives and compelled to provide to data and answers, they're remaining quite elusive by, you know, kind of responding to some stuff and just ignoring other stuff. And I'll put a link to an article on Forbes that talks about some of the things that they, they address some seller concerns and they just flat out ignore some other concerns, legitimate concerns in my view, related to the antitrust inquiry. As if, ah, you know, they ask 100 questions, we'll answer uh, 52 of them or 62 of them and then just hope the rest of them go away. I don't think that's a great strategy. Uh, I do understand the strategy, right? Amazon's kind of like, hey, they're not going to be able to keep up ahead of steam on all of these complaints. So let's just uh, pick on the ones we think we can win on and just let the others kind of uh, lie uh, in the background until we're, we're pushed into it. So I don't think it's a great strategy by Amazon, but I understand it. And frankly, you know, given the, the nature of government and its generally not awesome speed or <laughs> comprehensive understanding, I'm trying to be uh, delicate here, uh, it's not a bad bet for them to make. So as a seller, however, you should be very clear on what they are responding to and what it means for you and the stuff they're ignoring and what that means for you as well. And I've got some links if you go to awesomers.com slash 162. And finally, Amazon has provided a written something like 62-page response to the antitrust inquiry, which includes lots and lots and lots of words from Amazon, some more instructive than others. Uh, this is, in fact, the document where they admitted using third-party seller data. Uh, they also admitted that they uh, are forcing brands to match prices of competitors, even if they don't have a competitor. So if you have a private brand and you're selling your cookie jar, and Amazon can randomly just take the buy box away from you. If you say that cookie jar is $29, Amazon's uh, machine, its algorithms will decide, oh, no, that's too expensive for that cookie jar. But how in the world does that algorithm factor in all the unique factors of your individual specific private branded product, right? If you're the exclusive seller of your brand, it's up to you to set the price, not up to Amazon. And in this way, I do think that this is uh, very anti-competitive. Amazon's mission is to drive down prices. So Amazon's defense is, hey, this is good for consumers. We're driving down prices. But the problem is it's completely unfair to uh, sellers. For example, maybe I have sell that cookie jar for $29 and there's other cookie jars for $10. But what are the differences between them? An algorithm can never do a full analysis of those differences. Maybe my cookie jar is a licensed product from Disney and I got to pay Disney a bunch of money. Maybe my cookie jar is made of some sort of fancy new, you know, space age epoxy fiber, you know, uh, space shuttle kind of material. And the others are just made of cheap ceramic that will break instantly. There are so many factors that go into product development and, uh, and the brand of a product that it's really, it's, in my view, it's not right for Amazon to use other uh, competitive modeling to decide what your cookie jar should be priced at. It, it's, in fact, it's absolutely unfair because when you are the only seller of that brand, you have the right to set your price at whatever you want. And if it doesn't sell, it doesn't sell but the buy box shouldn't be taken away as an extra penalty. The market decides for itself. That's the best part of capitalism. The stuff on the Amazon marketplace either sells or it doesn't. And we don't need extra, you know, kind of kick in the pants to have Amazon's algorithm say, no, no, you can't raise the price on that, or you can't set the price on that to be too high. And it's in the computer's view of the world. It's just not fair. It's not reality. And Amazon remains very, very evasive when it comes to telling us what factors go into the buy box. Um, and that, I think, is unfortunate. Now, again, I want to defend Amazon as well here. The more Amazon talks about how its algorithm works or the buy box works or all those details, the more the black hat players will get into the gamesmanship. 
And so it is a fine line Amazon has to, to walk to give appropriate information without kind of giving up the secret sauce. All that said, there are some things that simply shouldn't be part of the equation. And that includes, if I'm the only seller of my cookie jar, it's Steve's brand of cookie jars, why in the world is Amazon having the right or having the audacity to tell me what the price should be? That's, it's, I'm outraged. All right, so anyway, that, that's that. Um, Amazon seller count is lower than the press has previously estimated by pretty fair margin, uh, which in my mind is probably still inflated somewhat because we have so many fake seller accounts being generated by uh, black hat players and not just from China, from Russia, from other places as well. And all of these foreign competitors are allowed to compete in my mind unfairly on foreign marketplaces. So they're foreign from wherever, but they can come to the US or UK or Canada or EU or Japan, and they can compete against local players that have higher costs, higher uh, compliance, higher government um, issues, including paying federal taxes, including being compliant with uh, you know, sales taxes in various uh, cases. There's a lot more that we have to do as a domestic seller in the United States, for example, than somebody who spins up a, an account from overseas. This is unfair. Uh, I don't like government intervention. I'm certainly not a big government guy. But if, if Amazon's not going to self-regulate in a fair and reasonable way, then maybe the only thing we can do is ask for Big Brother to come in and uh, kick him in the butt. And really, it's, you know, it's the balancing of regulatory nonsense with uh, good business. And when one is not doing what the other should, then they got to keep each other in check. Uh, finally, there's some details about MSRP versus sale pricing. Um, additionally, Amazon's unfair use, in my opinion, of placement of their own products or external competitors. Uh, there's a lot of things happening on that marketplace that you may or may not be aware of, but I really encourage you to read the 62-page uh, response by Amazon to the FTC inquiry, it can get you a quick education. And I think there's a lot of good info. I haven't even finished it all. I saw it last night. I got bored about 25 pages in. Uh, bored is the wrong word, but I just got frustrated and my eyes kind of glaze over and it's like, why are we dealing with this? Why can't somebody just choose to do the right thing for goodness sake? Uh, but that's not the world we live in. Uh, Amazon's too big and there are too many internal reasons why they make decisions and many of those decisions can be internal people making better salaries or bonuses if they sell more stuff so if that's your incentive inside of amazon you want to use every advantage you have right and that's i get it as a human i get it but goodness sakes let's put some guardrails up to make sure people are not overstepping their bounds i know firsthand people who've been completely put out of business by amazon basics knocking off and destroying their product lines that's just not right, frankly. Amazon actually has some of these people as hero stories. Like, hey, Amazon, I'm a hero. Uh, or, hey, everybody, I'm Amazon, I'm a hero. I put these people in business, I'm making the world a better place, and this indeed is what they use for their biggest part of their defense, is we're helping all these people create businesses. But then they will come over like a steamroller and roll over those exact same people, literally people they have in their offices on posters, or commercials or ads that they've run saying, we put these people in business, aren't we amazing? They've steamrolled over some of those same exact people. So uh, there's you know, probably no clean hands here. And by the way, for sellers who are indignant, uh, often like myself, none of us have perfectly clean hands either, right? There's been a time where you probably have stepped over the line. So let's uh, be serious that you know, we can be reasonable, we can, be, uh, we can even disagree on things, but we can still be respectful and not uh, lose our minds about this stuff. Uh, having a dialogue, having a conversation is far more important in my view than just you know, kind of wigging out and going nuts and uh, being irrational. So uh, keep your wits about you, maintain a vigilance for your own business, your own employees, your own staff, your own livelihood. You have to protect that because Amazon really doesn't care about it. And that's probably the key takeaway for you. As much as Amazon wants to say third-party sellers are kicking our butt, or they want to say, look at all these hero stories where we're putting people in business, 
you are irrelevant to them on an individual basis without question. That's just a fact. And it doesn't mean somebody in Amazon is personally targeting you. That's not the way it is. It just means their machine will roll over you in a heartbeat if that makes sense for their business. So be prepared. Don't expect that this is some, you know, a walk in the park. This is a battle. And Amazon has a lot more ammunition and a lot more uh, resources than the average seller. Well, than any seller on the planet, frankly. In fact, than any seller and all sellers combined on the planet. And this is why they need to at least have their uh, pulse checked from time to time by the, the gov government. Uh, and I, I want to reiterate, I think the government is generally not helpful. I think the government is often um, not super comprehensive or even competent in their investigations and their understanding of these issues. But I've been begging Amazon for years, dating back to 2016 and before on a direct basis, far before, frankly, for help, for some sensible things for, for sellers and having a lot of great conversations and even some measured progress, but not nearly enough to give me hope for the future. So anyway, this has been some Amazon seller news from uh, your little buddy, Steve Simonson from the awesomers.com podcast. Uh, go to awesomers.com slash 162 to see some of these links. I put in several links to some of these news items and you can read what the, uh, the press has to say about some of this stuff. And again, Nobody's perfect. The press isn't perfect in their reporting. The government's certainly not perfect in its investigation. Amazon, by far, is not perfect in their execution in business or protection of sellers. And none of us are perfect as sellers. We all have uh, ways we can improve. Uh, but the more we learn, the more we engage, and the more we have a conversation, I think the better chance we have of smoothing out the wrinkles that exist in the, the online e-commerce marketplace seller space. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. And until then, have a great, wonderful selling season.